I'm Antonio, and this is South Austin Barbershop. We're going to do a haircut and beard trim. How comfortable are you going? How com comfortable are you going short on the sides? Uh, like, not super short, not like, oh, I see a lot of like super close fades. So like, okay, like, like that. that. And that's a little bit too short for okay. But so, so let me ask you this, on the sides, are you okay with barely being able to grab your hair? Yeah. That's okay. Okay, so we can, we're okay at least going a half an inch on the, on the sides. Oh, even, even a little bit less. Okay, so just not bald. So let me ask you this. How long would you like it to stay on top? Are you looking for a shortcut? I'm looking like, man, like gone. Okay. I'm tired of this. So, so is it okay to barely be able to swoop over? That's perfect. That's perfect. That's good. Okay, let me ask you this. Now to the beard. Are we losing the beard? Are we taming the beard? Tame it and just kind of flatten the sides a little bit. Okay, so not, it, not quite so wild. So with with the 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 fade being so low, I can take the beard pretty low only on the sides. Okay. So this blend will come down to about here before I start to fade and line up. That's perfect. That sounds great. Mustache. Are we leaving the length and just taming that, or would you like to take the length down and clean everything up? Any preferences? I don't really know. It's a great answer. It's never a bad answer. We're gonna start with some water just to get some type of obedience. How long has it been since you had a haircut? How long have you been growing it? About two years. Two years? All right, so right now I'm just combing through it, getting it wet so I can section it off, section off what I want to cut short and keep long or longer, should I say? So I'm going to start with one side at a time since it's long hair all the way around. So I'm pretty much going to start working on the right side. Because I'm, even though I'm taking the top low, even though I'm taking the top low also, I want to separate it. Everything is shears. Firm believer of shears. Whenever any any shear cuts, for the most part, even when I'm like just point cutting, I only cut on the pull off, pull away. I don't go in cutting. You can't really control exactly what you cut. I learned that from a, another barber by the name of Justin Thomas, an amazing. And then you also don't wanna, you wanna make sure you don't cut the hair, I mean the ear. So that's why I only cut on when I'm pulling it away. I just like to get everything a little more Organized. I don't really care how I do it. It's not really a right or wrong way when you're just taking a limp down because I'm going to take it so much shorter. I just do it in sections so I know I don't miss anything. I don't know. It's kind of like a, a left to right thing but backwards. What made you get your hair cut? Uh, just got uh, back from a metal concert. I kind of felt like it'd be a shame to cut it before going to that. What concert? Uh, it was for a Montemar in San Antonio. Okay, okay. It was awesome. Okay, okay, okay. This is a completely different person already. <laughs> Your first uh, priority is safety, so I always cover the ear whenever I can, whenever I'm working with shears, before I go in on anything. Just like the precautions. If you, if you get used to doing things like that, you, it becomes second nature when you're cutting. And now onto the clipper work. I may do a one on the sides, blend it up. So I'm gonna start and go in with the two. The two is like my baseline. I know it's not too short and it's not too long. So that's pretty much where I'm gonna start my cut. I'll use this as a guideline. 
So everything, nothing under this will be too much of a, it won't, it won't drop under a two. Even if I taper the ends off, or even if I blend down a little at the very bottom, this is pretty much the lowest the haircut's gonna go. Again, with the holding of the ear, safety of your, your uh, client is definitely always number one. It's kind of hard to charge someone if they're missing an ear, you know? One important thing when it comes to barbering, I found out, uh, as far as the barber goes, not the client, is how you stand, your posture, your shoes, the mat you stand on. Depending on the type of the amount of hours that you put in barbering, all of that matters. Okay, so we are done with our first guideline. That there is a two. Now, I do not, I would be a liar if I said I did, I do not cut hair like the traditional barber, in my opinion. So I don't go step for step. Right now, I am doing a five. I'm using a five guard. Um, the reason I'm doing this is, to me, it's my next guideline. Um, so a lot of people, would like to, after a two, they will go to a three, and then maybe blend that two and that three together, and then go to a four, and maybe blend that three and that four together, which is not a bad technique, which is, doesn't, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, um, but after cutting for years, having a few years under your belt, I think every barber should and will um, grow their own tactics, their own way of, their style of cutting. And um, it just works for me. So I've been blending that two with this five. Well, I don't even blend it. I put the two in and I put the five in. And that shows me pretty much my lowest and my highest point of my blend. Where some people, they'll put that two in and they'll put that three in and they'll put that and by the time they get to the four, it's already up here and it's too late. And everyone doesn't like a hot fade. So that's my two, that's my five. I'm going in with a three and just, I use, okay. So when I do a technique like that, I consider my clippers now an eraser. So I'm erasing the first line which will not come all the way out with the three because the first line is a two. Another reason I say I'm not the traditional barber because I won't take that two and a half out until the end of the haircut. I can see that two and a half clear as day. The, the, a client may not see that two and a half or where that two and a half needs to go, but I do and it sticks out and I won't be able to unsee it. That's that two to that three. This two and a half sticks out, you know? If you, you can even brush it with your comb and that much sticks out. That's your two and a half area. I won't touch it. I put my two, I mean my three in. My five is already in. So I clean up my three to, I mean my three and my five with a four guard. And there you have a blend from a two to a five excluding the two and a half cleanup. You know what? I'm gonna show you what I mean. I have my two opened all the way up. So, I also like to do when putting that two and a half in, it's called a flick. That eliminates you putting another line in and you're Flicking into that, into the blend. Okay, so we're gonna come back to the side. From here, I have a two blended up to a five. The five is pretty high, mid highish. None of this here yet is cut. It's time to blend. Such a big difference already, bro. This is crazy. Okay, so let me ask you, are you still gonna, do you plan to still style your hair backwards? I mean, yeah. Yep, let's get it. 
So styling backwards makes it super easy. So with this technique, blending a style, a, a, hair, a head that's styled to the back, to me, I leave this, the crown, to last because I'm blending this to this. So now I'm gonna cut the top of the head. We're going pretty short. I'm gonna leave it about an inch, inch and a half long. Just enough to still style backwards. Again, the cutting technique, Justin Thomas. I call him the goat, the goat with shears. The dude is nice. I would like to see him on this, this show one day. I know he probably does his own thing, but it's pretty nice at shears, man. Some heads, especially with hair that goes straight back, some of them go straight back, the entire head, and it just flows perfectly. On this occasion, it kind of naturally parts here, in a sense, right? And brush down to give the back effect. So you don't want to go into this head as if it all goes back. You want to cut his hair as if it parts here, and then keep it long enough so you can still style it back. You want to keep that into effect while you're cutting, before you even you want to take note of that, before you even go into the haircut. Because it will, if you cut it too short over here, it'll start to mushroom and it'll start just poking straight up. Then you'll need product to hold it back versus just what if, what if your client doesn't use product? You know what I'm saying? What if he uh, just gets up and go every day? Now you're making him use product because his hair is too short and every morning it poofs up and sticks straight up over here. I call it the mushroom. You don't want that. So what I would do is I part it as if and then cut it that way. So that way I'll make sure this stays long enough to flip over. So when I cut hair, I go in a circle. I go clockwise with it. So since I started here, I make my way all the way around and I end here. Let's get it. Still not fully doing the size. We're just cleaning it so I can see what it will look like before I blend the sides. Doing the most I can up and top because I pretty much blend the sides with um, like like clipper over comb. The sides into the top. Now you see how it's not just poofy. See how it still flows. Now for the blend of the sides to the top. To me, you can only way you can gain this skill or technique if you don't, if you're not um, accustomed to it. Only way you can get better at it is to do it. That's pretty much everything in barbering, but especially this, because um, you can mess up if you're not paying attention. It doesn't matter if you're 10 years into the barber game. It doesn't matter if you're a year into it. That's a clipper over comb is something that you can either do perfect or mess up horrifically every time or any time if you aren't focused or if you're not paying attention. Not only can you mess up if your clippers slip, but you can mess up if your comb slips. One thing I have learned is whenever you're blending, especially long to short with clipper over comb, you should cut from side to side to be a smooth, so with this cut, I think I'm gonna take the bottom just a tad bit lower. So the bottom is at a two. I'm actually deciding to clean up the bottom a little more with a one and a half. Look down for me, Nick. Perfect. Okay, that's cleaned up with the one and a half, so we're gonna step right into the beard from here. And keeping the one and a half on, 
I'm going to clean up the lighter area of the beer, of the sideburns. We're going to blend this so you don't even notice that area. This is a one guard. Again, a gentle, gentle swoop just to clean up the darker areas. I'm gonna take it down one more level, but I'm gonna, this is a one. I'm gonna actually skip the zero for right now. And just go open guard. Normally I use my masters for all open guard, no guard um, techniques, but I'm not looking to go skin skin right here. So these legends will work just well. I'm gonna go back up to the, I'm gonna go to half now. Again, we're still just cleaning light hairs. Still in the blending technique. I'm gonna run a two at the lowest part of the blend so far. I'm still just inching because at this point, I don't want to take too much length from his beard. So I'm going to start this side. See, this side isn't as light as the other side. So my technique with that is with the lineups, with everything when you're doing two of them. On the, like on the head, you do two sideburns, two sides of the beard. Um, no one's sideburns are the same, two sideburns, no one's two sides of their beards grow the same, nothing. So what I like to do is look at them before I start cutting and determine which one is the most difficult to get how I see it, how I imagine it. And I would start with the most difficult. From there, the other side is a piece of cake. So little by little, I'm closing my open guard just to lighten up a little more. But like I said, this side, the hair grows a little thicker, a little darker than the other side. But that doesn't mean you want it to be able to be seen. You don't want anyone to notice that. So, you take your time and you inch it out. All right. I'm gonna throw a little product on this side of this beer. Again, this is nothing but shaving gel. We are on to the lineup. This is not the final stage, but it is very, very close. Get some of this product off of them. All right, so that's the back. We're going to jump to the beard, the beard line. First and foremost. So I'm gonna put the first beard line in with clippers, with liners, standing, sitting straight up. And then after that, I'm gonna lay on back and use my razor. When it comes to the lineup, I like to keep it as natural as possible. I'm only cutting what hangs over. You don't want to dig into that lineup unless they ask you to. Because again, just like the top hair, you don't know how, you don't know if they use product or don't use product or 
So you don't want to like change their haircut just because they sat in your chair. You don't want to alter their everyday lifestyle because they got a, a cut by you. But on the same token, you do want to compliment every day after this cut. You want them to come back. You don't want them to go another two years without a haircut, you know? <laughs> Even though it makes for a great video, don't get me wrong. I like the length of the beard. I like where the natural line is, so I'm going to use the blade for that. I already put product on it, uh, my shaving gel, so the beard is ready to go. The beard is ready to be shaved, and we're coming back. Relax. Is this too tight? Let me know. I'm going to shoot a little water over you. Close your eyes and your mouth. I do like for the face to be a little moist, even though I already put the product on. So what I do is I put my first line in. Please, 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 whenever you put a razor on anyone's face, this is just for anyone amateur in barbering. Stretch the skin as much as possible. This is the only time in your haircut that your, your patron's comfort does not matter. Stretch the skin as much as possible. It prevents cuts. They may wonder why you are stretching their face so much, but if you cut their face, they will then fully understand. I would rather them wonder. Again, stretch, stretch, stretch. This is the only part of the haircut with their comfort is not your responsibility. Because their comfort comes in with no cuts on their face. Everyone knows the worst cuts are the smallest ones. And this tool right here is the king of small cuts. Real quick, sit up for me. We are gonna check and see how this looks before we match the other side up with it. Okay. So we can definitely improve a couple of things. Let's do it. My first thing I see that needs to be improved is the art. It kind of softens up here. So we're going to dig in just a little bit. Just to straighten this line up right here. You're coming on back, brother. Come on up, bro. Let me check it out. Light razor on the stash. Really light. And I say really light because I didn't put shaving gel there. And so you don't want to overcut here because it will irritate the skin. We are going to use liners for this one. We're going to clean up some hairs here up front. So I'm going to leave this natural. What I mean by that is no, not going to be any line. I'm not going to line them up up front. I'm not going to make it detailed. I'm going to keep it mad natural. So right now I'm going to shape your beard a little. Not too much. I'm not going to take too much length off of it because it looks good. This is another line that I'm not going to make too defined. Um, only because his beard is, is big and you can't see it. You can't see his line, it's kind of under his beard. So there's no point to me to uh, irritate the skin like that. I only do that when you can see it. Uh, if it's a shorter beard, 
and you'll be able to see the line under here, but the way his beard lays, you can't. So, it's no point of having a raw neck for the next week, you know, a few days. Also in barber school, anytime you stretch the face, when you stretch outward, when you stretch up, you don't want to stretch like down, like in or down, it creates wrinkles. It doesn't create wrinkles, but this helps get rid of wrinkles stretching out, so that's it. A little shine, so it's not your typical matte. It also doesn't, it's not like a gel also, so it doesn't hold or shine like a gel. It's like the best of both worlds in a sense. Um, so I get my hair done at the furthest every two months. So I put this in my hair a few times out of that two months and it does just like, does magic, but again, the best thing I like about it is that it rejuvenates the skin, the hair, the scalp, all of the above. You can put this through your entire hair. You cannot use product if you chose not to, you know, with that oil. I really like it. It works great for a beard, too. All right. Wondering where all these studio videos have gone? Well, they've gone over to our new channel, The Beard Brand Alliance. Check us out over there or stick around if you only dig the barbershop videos.